Have you ever stood in front of an elevator and wondered how it always stops exactly level with the floor outside? Whether you're on the first floor or the 50th, the elevator doors open and like magic, it's perfectly aligned. No step up, no step down, just a seamless transition. It's one of those things we take for granted, but behind the scenes, it's actually a small engineering miracle. So how does an elevator manage to pull off this perfect alignment every single time? Let's break it down, one floor at a time, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start from the beginning. At its core, an elevator is a suspended metal box that moves vertically inside a shaft. It's guided by rails to keep it steady and pulled up or lowered down by strong steel cables attached to a motor. That motor is controlled by a system that acts like the brain of the elevator, receiving commands, monitoring movement, and ensuring everything happens safely and smoothly. But here's the real challenge. It's not just about moving up or down. The system also has to stop the elevator at the exact right position, level with the floor. And that's where things get impressive. Elevator systems use a combination of sensors, motors, and control logic to make sure they stop within a tiny margin of error. As the elevator approaches the desired floor, the motor starts to slow down gradually. This isn't just for comfort, it's for accuracy. The slower the approach, the more precisely the system can stop. Helping with that precision are the sensors placed inside the elevator shaft and the car itself. These sensors track the position of the elevator in real time, down to the centimeter or even millimeter. Think of them like guideposts, constantly updating the elevator's brain about where it is and how far it still needs to go. Even with all this tech, elevators can still end up just slightly off when they stop, maybe a bit too high or too low. That's where the automatic leveling system kicks in. It makes final, nearly invisible adjustments, nudging the car up or down just enough so the elevator floor lines up perfectly with the building floor, keeping passengers safe and trip smooth. Now let's throw another variable into the mix, weight. When people enter an elevator, their combined weight causes the car to sink ever so slightly. It's more noticeable in older systems or in hydraulic elevators where pressure changes directly affect the car's position. More people equals more downward force, and that force can cause the elevator to stop a little lower than expected. Modern elevators solve this by including load sensors. These sensors measure the weight inside the car in real time and feed that data to the controller. So even before the car stops, the system knows how much correction might be needed and compensates on the fly. It's a constant balancing act, literally, between mechanical forces and digital controls, all working together to keep things level. Without that precision, even a small misalignment could cause trips, stumbles, or damage over time. Now, imagine this level of precision, but in a high-rise building, with an elevator that travels at 20, 30, or even 60 floors per minute. In tall skyscrapers, the margin for error becomes even smaller. For instance, in the Burj Khalifa, the elevators can travel up to 10 meters per second, so even a millimeter of misalignment at those speeds requires constant real-time correction. To deal with that, skyscraper elevators use advanced encoders, tiny devices that track the elevator's position with extreme precision. 
Some systems can detect the elevator's position down to fractions of a millimeter. These elevators also use more advanced software that adapts in real time, making micro adjustments based on acceleration, load, and even building sway. Misaligned elevators can be dangerous, especially for people with limited mobility. Even a small step up or down can be a tripping hazard. It also disrupts the smooth experience passengers expect, making the ride feel less reliable. In places like hotels or office buildings, even small inconsistencies can affect people's perception of quality and maintenance. That's why in places like hospitals, accessible buildings, and senior living facilities, elevators are equipped with ultra-precise leveling systems, often using infrared or laser-based sensors to ensure there's absolutely no difference between the elevator floor and the hallway. Of course, even the best systems need maintenance. Over time, parts wear out, cables stretch, and brakes lose some of their grip. Interestingly, it wasn't always this way. Back in the early days of elevators, they were operated manually. A human operator would use a lever to start, stop, and align the car with the floor. And if the operator stopped too early or too late, you'd have to step up or down to get in or out. Not exactly ideal. As elevators became more automated in the early 20th century, the need for precise floor leveling became more important. And let's not forget the importance of doors. Elevator doors won't even open unless the system confirms the car is level and locked into place. This is another safety mechanism built into modern systems. So next time you take an elevator and it feels like stepping onto solid ground, Pause for a moment and appreciate what just happened. You didn't just travel vertically through a building. Because leveling an elevator isn't just about convenience. It's about making sure every ride is smooth, safe, and surprisingly precise. And all of it, every floor, every stop, is right on level. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.